Perspective can be defined as the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface, a monitor, printing paper for example, so as to give an accurate impression of their position relative to each other. A painter can make perspective whatever he or she wants by simply changing the size of one object relative to another. Draw it bigger, it's closer, smaller, it's further away. Unlike a painter, a photographer can't change perspective to suit his picture. So we have a situation where one of the most important facets of a picture is set mechanically by the lens itself. I'm going to explain a bit about perspective and what control you as a photographer have over it. It's an important subject and as you will see, you can have some control. Unlike a painter though, who once he has set up his easel will change perspective with his eye and brush, the photographer's control is with his eye and his legs. I should just add that all the focal lengths I refer to are for lenses for my Panasonic GH2 Micro Four Thirds camera. For the full frame equivalent, just double them. The most common lens in use today is a standard zoom. Compact cameras and DSLRs alike come with them. At a minimum, they come with a three time zoom range and give you a classic wide angle, standard portrait lens of yesterday's 35mm cameras in one convenient optical package. The main use for a zoom lens in most people's eyes is to get more into the picture, wide angle end, or make something at a distance look nearer, telephoto end. These are perfectly valid reasons to use the zoom range available to you, but not the only or even the necessarily most useful ones. Provided you are willing to use your feet, your zoom lens gives you a powerful pictorial tool, a choice of perspectives, a chance to relate or divorce your subject from their surroundings. What most people do is take out the camera and from wherever they happen to be standing, zoom the lens in and out until the picture includes what you want. If it's a portrait, you want the head and shoulders to fill the frame, so just hose the zoom in and out until it does. Here, I switch on my camera with the intention of taking a portrait of my subject in front of his house. The zoom comes on at its widest 14mm focal length. It's not a portrait, but a picture of a house with someone happening to be sitting on the wall. So I zoom into the 42mm end of the zoom to make my subject bigger in the frame. Now I'm happy with the size of my subject in the frame, but there's not enough of the house in the picture. It just looks like a picture of a person that gets a distracting background. Now for the framing with the legs. Set the lens to its 14mm widest angle and walk closer until the subject size is roughly the same as it was in the previous shot. Now, the relationship between subject and house, the perspective, is more balanced. I plainly meant to photograph the person because they are so large in the frame. But I also clearly have the house in my picture by intention because it shares prominence with my subject. The perspective relates the two elements and in doing so delivers the intended message. This person lives here. To illustrate how different you can make the perspective relationship between subjects, I've taken pictures of a couple of my Eneloop batteries. Here I'm using the Olympus 45mm, here the Panasonic Leica 25mm and here the Olympus 12mm. The different effect of 12 and 45mm is very striking. It's a powerful creative tool. I haven't moved the batteries at all in these shots. What I have done is move the camera in and out to maintain the same image size on frame of the nearest battery. Remember though, what changes the perspective is a combination of lens focal length and the use of your legs moving the camera nearer and further away. If you stay in the same position and swap your wide angle for your telephoto, all you get is a bigger image. Here is an example. Here is a scene at the Pen Ponds in Richmond Park in London, taken from near the Royal Ballet School. This shot is on the 25mm lens, and this is on the 1-300mm to Panasonic zoom set to 300mm. Wow, look at that foreshortening effect. But now, let's pull up the centre of the 25mm shot. Same foreshortening. The tele shot looks a lot better technically of course because it hasn't been magnified 12 times like the 25mm shot has, but the perspective is the same on both. If I walk the 200 odd metres down to the ponds, the 25mm shot would look very very different, but hey that's why I've got a 300mm right? I'll finish with a pictorial example going from the sublime to the ridiculous. Here is a tree, some dead wood, some ferns and a blue sky. Here they are again. One is at a long telephoto 100mm focal length and the other at extreme wide angle 7mm. Same content, same day, same place. Different picture though. Good isn't it? So just to recap on the diagrams I showed you before. With a 105mm lens 
you're quite a way back from the subject with your camera and you're not getting much of the background in. With the 50 mil, you're getting closer to your subject. We've got the same subject size here, but quite a lot more of the background in. When we go into the actual wide angle lens, we're close to the subject now, but we still maintain the same subject size, but much more of the background in there, much more related to the background behind them. With the 18 millimeter, we're kind of taking that to an extreme. And I've maintained the subject size, as you can see here, and we've got an awful lot of the background in. So that'd be, that's great for confined spaces, somebody in front of a big house, and so on. But the only trouble is the camera's right, looking right up their nose, and it'll get a lot of distortion. So in practice, you wouldn't really want to go to that extreme. To sum up, manipulation of perspective by changing camera position and lens focal length gives you a great deal of control over the expression of your picture. It requires thought and, often for a photographer, physical effort to get the effect right. Sometimes a couple of metres nearer or further away and a few millimetres focal length, more or less, could turn an ordinary image into an interesting one. Perspective, unlike exposure, blur or depth of field effects, can't be changed after you've taken your picture. As the King himself sang, it's now or never. Hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching.